Hey guys, it's Prepare Mentality here. I have a special guest, the first one for Preparedness Talk this year, 2024. I have Anthony from Bibles and Barbells. You may have seen him on YouTube. He does a lot of preparedness stuff, a lot of getting ready, uh, a lot of self-sufficiency, and he also stays fit. Uh, he was a major inspiration when I was in the Army, listening to his prayers and uh, listening to his scriptures that he would read on YouTube. So I just wanted to get him on preparedness talk first uh, because he was on my heart and uh, to, to really get his insight, get his wisdom and his understanding of what's going on today and how we can better ourselves and prepare ourselves in these current times. Anthony, I'm glad you're here. What's going on? Thank, thank you very much for having me and thank you for inviting me. I'm glad the I had to update the Zoom. I didn't I was on I haven't been on Zoom for a while. I said, yeah. Oh gosh, I better see what's gotta be done. So I just needed to update it and came through fine. So good, good. Great. Yeah, I, I wanted to get this started. Uh, you know, I see that you are doing a lot of things with uh your R V now. I've been on your your Instagram and Yeah. You know, what, what are some of the updates that you've been, been doing? Well, well, I have, uh, in 2016, I, we purchased a, a 17 foot forest river R pod. It's a tow behind travel trailer. Uh, it's great for two people, you know, my wife and I, but it could sleep three or four, depending on how many you can get in the, in the spare bed where the table goes down. Okay. But one of the things that, um, I wanted to do with it is to make sure that I could run the camper off grid, you know, like with a solar generator, like, um, you know, Blue Eddy or Jackery or Goal Zero, right. you know, whatever the brand you have, uh, but to be able to run certain things on the DC side, like um, the fan, the lights, um, the uh, refrigerator, uh, the slide out mine has a slide out so like the the kitchen area opens up so i could run that slide out with what i did to it so i did some minor thing watch some videos on youtube seeing what some other people did uh, youtube's a great medium for that for learning and finding things and then i duplicated it in my rv if you saw some of the posts i did today i drilled through it uh, thankfully, I didn't hit a beam. Uh, the research I did showed that there was no beams in that area. So I was able to put a, a like a small hatch door and I could run my solar MC4 connectors now in there, which I did today just to show really quick how to hook that up. Or I could run an extension cord like the electric for the RV, the 30 amp cord. I could step it down run a regular extension in and then run almost everything except for maybe the rooftop AC that way as well, just by plugging it into the solar generator. So things like that. Now, uh, since I've never used the onboard water tank, there's a, you got city water when you hook at a campsite, okay. that water comes from the campsite basically into your RV, but your, your tank that holds your water, I think I have a 30 gallon tank, mm -hmm. that tank, I've never used. So now this week I'm going to fill it, see if the pump works, see if it'll fill, you know, see if it, the water will work and then run, try to run that off grid as well, just to make sure I'm ready. So if I did ever have to go, you know, people talk about bugging out or whatever. Right. If I did have to go mobile or I had the camper park somewhere that I could drive to the camper, it could be, I could just plug and play, you know, plug my RV. I mean, excuse me, my battery in, put out a couple of solar panels and kind of be up and running in an emergency and just to have for fun too, just for, I make it more like not doom and gloom, but I make it, Hey, I want to be able to, if I could see if I could do this off grid, if I went to like a, a state park or some farmland somewhere, I didn't have to worry about, you know, hooking up to anything. I could just stay off grid. Yeah. That's so that's what I'm doing recently in the recent weeks. Yeah, that's awesome. I think I think it's very important to not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. And so, yeah, you intertwine your everyday living and preparedness into what you're actually doing on a daily basis. It makes it easy, you right? Know, you don't have to go out and figure things out. You've already figured it out. You know, with the RV, right. 
how how it you know works all the compartments you're already out there doing the thing so that that's, that's right and i i learned that way like people could like read a book or i have to i'll watch something maybe if i have to actually physically try to do it and once i do that it kind of yeah. clicks in my head better i'm able i'm able to uh you know process it better once i once i do it yeah. and if i mess up i just try again and ask some questions or find somebody smarter than you that's always a good thing right. I use that in training when I was competing. One of the things I would try to do is if I was training for powerlifting or bodybuilding. I would try to find a gym partner or somebody better than me, stronger, you know, stronger, faster, whatever, or, and work out with them or piggyback onto them. And that would just take me, try to get me myself to the next level. Right. So that's one of the things I did. And that kind of helped me out. Um, in my co competitions too. All right. So with, with your RV, what are some <laughs> of the major scenarios that you feel that it would take for you and your family to change locations, leave where you are, you know, what, what would be like the top three scenarios? Uh, a scenario is like, uh, okay, well, number one, if there was something in my immediate home front I me mean, my, my goal or my my plan my first plan is to stay put right you know stay at home that's where most everything is a lot of people i think hear the word bugging out they you know they think of putting on a backpack running into the woods and surviving which most people can't right. most of us can't you know i know i couldn't do it for an extended period of time i'm just right. at 61 years old now and you know so number one i want to stay home but if something happened in the community like uh well number one if there was a natural disaster like like what's happening now all over the country tornadoes it's hurricane season now i'm in south carolina we're not immune to uh, i'm close to charlotte we're kind of inland but we still get bad storms and charlotte's had hurricanes pass through in the past um and so something like that would force me to leave. If something happened to my primary residence, uh, I would be forced to a go to my parents or my brother. They're kind of close by, but if I, and if I did go to them, I could take my camper theoretically, if I got to it in time with me. So I didn't have to burden them. I could campers like a small little battleship mm -hmm. between the camper and my van it's my like um, mobile base, like an art, you know, like a you're in the we're in the military, right. like a kind of like a mobile base. Yeah. I have everything on the van, most everything I need. The camper is kind of staged. All I have to do is go to the 24 hour storage place, mm -hmm. hook it up and go. But again, your scenarios depend on when it happens. You know, if if, you know there's an earthquake or something that happens and you're not ready for it and you're stuck at home. Hopefully you survive that and you, okay. Can you get to, can you get to the camper? You have to, or you, maybe, you know, something's imminent and you're able to get out with prior knowledge. Like people think, talk about bugging out. If something happens and there's some type of uh, political un, uh, civil unrest or riots or something, and you get wind of it, the, and you think your home base is going to be overrun, mm -hmm. uh, then you need to make a decision and get out beforehand. So I would have to make that decision. Hey, I have to leave my home base. And we have, you know, 10 hours, five hours, two hours, get to the camper, get it to uh, point B where I'm going to go and then go from there. But my my uh, the scenarios now today would be, you know, first natural disasters, second, some type of uh, like grid down, maybe where there's a civil unrest in my area that's imminent. And again, you've got to be out and about or have your feelers out to know that that's where things like listening into ham radio or scanners, you, you know, you just can't be hunkered down in your house with no no comms or nothing going on you. You have to have information ahead of time in order to get out. So something like that, where you think you're going to be overrun mm -hmm. at your house, especially if you have kids or in my case, I have 
you know, my wife hasn't been of good health over the years. Um, and I have grandkids very close to me, two of them that live literally next door. Okay. So I've got kind of a lot of things. I'm not abandoning my grandsons, right? my daughter, my wife. So um, for me to leave my home base, it's got to be something really bad like, like that. Like you're being overrun and you've got to, you've got to get out of Dodge. Other than that, uh, think I'm standing and fighting like the, you know, the 300 um, because there's just logistically it's, it's not as easy as people think to, right. to go from point A to point B and then survive long-term, maybe short-term. Yes. But right. <clears throat> yeah. so yeah, political, some type of grid down that brings on, political unrest or something like that where you th I fear of being overrun and I can't defend my homestead. I would have to, you know, live to fight another day. Then you have to flee. Yeah. Other than that, I'm staying put and okay. because of my situation, you, you might be different or yeah. somebody watching this is single or, yeah. you know, th it's, it's different and depends where you live. You're yeah. near the city, in the city, so in the suburbs. We, I, I, I know this comes up a lot with people because they have family, children, right? Uh, either elderly parents or people right. in their family who are handicapped. Right. How, how do you bring, or e even at all, bring the topic or the subject up to your family in these circumstances? Is it something that that's that's hey guys, let's let's gather around, let's talk about this scenario that might happen. Or look what's going on on TV, you know, let's just be all be aware. And this is the plan. How, right. how do you deal with that? Well, well, in my case, I will, uh, since I make videos like YouTube or Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people in my immediate family that are here close to me, uh, will, I will send a video to them and say, hey, watch this. We need, you need to learn this, this, or this, or hey, like, uh, like I just did with my daughter. I gave them a uh, solar generator, solar panel, uh, kind of showed them how to use it. I gave them a ham radio programmed on the same coordinates as me, kind of did like a little bit of a drill with them, but not, they haven't taken a deep dive yet. Let's put it that way. Right. What I don't want to happen is for something to happen. And then they're totally yeah. caught off guard, which most people in my family are. Except for my brother Rocco, who's been a prepper like me, and he lives about ten miles from me, okay. um, and so he's somebody I have close by that's kind of on the same wavelength. Mm -hmm. My parents, however, are half a mile away. My father's eighty-two. My mother's eighty. They're in my father. His knees aren't that good. Uh, my mother's in good health uh, overall, pretty good health. Right. But again, they. They're not preppers. They'll, I'll talk to them a lot on a lot of things, but uh, I have to make arrangements for me to, or my brother and I, to be able to take them in. Or you know, they're they're not going to be self sufficient, right? At a, at a time where there's a grid down, they just can't do it, right? So I have to make in my plans is a plan for them. Let's put it that way, right? So yeah, I, I I recently we recently watched the the new Civil War movie. Uh, oh, the new one! They, I haven't seen it. What, yeah, there, but what do you think was, of it? it? It wasn't bad. It was uh, it definitely gives you a look into a modern day scenario, mm -hmm. uh, which the president was on his third term. Uh, <clears throat> you have, you have uh, Texas and California create the Western Front the WS. Okay. They succeed from the rest of the government. In the moot. So Texas and California, that's a, yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it could happen. California has a lot of, um, yeah. Um, conservatives, I guess, or right. Right. So it, 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 it puts you right in the movie. There's no, beginning okay. and there's really no end. Um, huh. It puts you in the, in the middle of a uh, press photographer. She's famous for her uh, pictures uh, during this conflict, and it makes the image of a group 
traveling to get from New York City to D.C., but they have to take a long way around to get to D.C. So, like, they're going past uh, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. The oh, gosh, yeah, they're way. taking a loop around. Right, so so it follows them that way. But, you know, w w when it gets to the travel... What's their, what's their goal in to, to, to do? To... The, the, the photographer in the group, they're trying to get a one-on-one uh, -on -one interview with the current president. Ah, okay. So they're trying to make their way to D.C. to get that interview. Um, I don't want to give any more away. Yeah, yeah. Is it so? If it's still, I may go see it this week if it's still in the movies. I'll it's, see. Uh, we actually saw it on Prime. It's on Prime. Oh, Amazon Prime? Yeah, Amazon Prime. Oh, yeah. gee. Uh, what is it, rental? Yeah, it's rented. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll rent it and watch it tonight. Yeah, it's not a bad. It, it definitely gives you a different uh, area of a yeah. good town scenario right. they're blocking roads so, some towns yeah. um are going as if nothing happened other towns are impoverished and there's a lot right. of you know violence so it right. definitely gives you an insight in, into right. it, into that what, one of my favorite shows on that order i mean it's an older show mm -hmm. it's called jericho yes i've seen i don't it. know if you've seen it I, I i have it on dvd okay. and you can watch it on um it's either paramount plus or one of the yeah i saw it on netflix and I always go back to it and watch it because it kind of shows. Uh, and they, I believe they stopped season two abruptly because season two started, got to eight episodes, and then it, it went off the air. Right. But it's kind of on the order of, you know, states seceded, the country was attacked, mm -hmm. there was nuclear, you know, uh, events in different cities. Yeah. That that movie does a lot of uh, gives you a lot of good insight into, you know, like a grid down which they had in Jericho. Right. They had no power, no, and the people had to come together, and yeah. then they started warring with, you know, if you saw it, mm -hmm. other towns yeah. where they used to go to football games together. Right. Now they're fighting each other. So yeah, yeah. strange things when yeah, and and, and, and it definitely. I mean, I like watching those videos because it makes you think of certain areas that you can prep for or right. situations that either if you're not ready you can start to get ready and kind of fill out that scenario you know <clears throat> what would happen with neighbors what would happen with family members what would happen with if we had a group of people trying to break in the homes you know coming down right the road. um so yeah right. they're, they're they're really good for that at least that's what i try to get yeah out. yeah and, and most of i mean most of us uh, me included live i don't I mean i don't live like some of the preppers on YouTube where they have this uh, compound or they're in the country yeah, and they have a, uh, you know, like-minded individuals and they're living together, which is a great, I think is a great thing right. if you could do it. Yeah. Um, however, over the years, my situation, you gotta, you have to um, take the hand you're dealt. Mm -hmm. You know, in my situation, my wife got sick in 2015 with the, I don't know if you knew uh, some of that history. She had the brain tumor. Right. In 2015, she had the surgically removed. Yes. Uh, she went well from that. It was a pituitary tumor, non-cancerous. Then in 2019, they found um, residual tumor in a part of the brain uh, called the cavernous sinus that can't be physically operated on. Okay. And so during the COVID lockdowns in 2020, we had to, tra well, right before the lockdowns, we had to travel to DC, stay in, we stayed in a hotel outside of DC and um, she had to get seven weeks of radiation at Johns Hopkins wow. uh, Sibley Memorial Hospital, which is not the main branch of Johns Hopkins. It's, it's in DC. It's kind of like right outside the city, the DC area. Right. But while we were in the hotel, the first, I think it was the first or second, first night or the second night in the hotel, right before she was going to start the radiation treatments, the seven weeks, mm -hmm. the COVID lockdowns hit. We went from being in the hotel the night before, having dinner in the lobby, blah, 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 yeah. talking to everybody, nothing's really going on. The next morning... They fired the, the staff left. The cooks were gone. The ceilings were, for some reason, some pipes broke. 
the lobby was flooded. I walked downstairs. I thought it was like World War II or World War III. Uh, yeah. It went from fine to you're in SHTF, basically. Right. And so now I'm away from home, mm. from South Carolina to D.C. Mm. It's me and my wife in a hotel. Right. Luckily, I brought, I loaded the car. I had items to get us through, but I had to make my way next door to the food line or one of the big stores, mm. stay in line. And I bought like, five, I remember buying like $500 worth of food. And we had an efficiency hotel because it had a little kitchen in it. Mm -hmm. And I have videos on it. If you go on my, I'll send you the links. They're on my channel. If you go to that, to March of 2020 on my channel, mm -hmm. you'll see all my COVID vids start from the hotel room. Okay. I went, did videos from the hotel. I got all the food behind me <laughs> telling our story. Yeah. But basically that was my biggest fear. Wow. Being away from home base mm. and something happening. And it's right. me and my wife. Now, thankfully I have family in that area mm -hmm. of DC, Virginia, right. that we kind of leaned upon and helped us out at the time. But we got through the seven weeks, but it was, the hospital after the second week of radiation would not let me in anymore to be with her because of the COVID, you know, the masks and all that. So I had to sit in the parking garage um, to drive on the streets of DC. I had a special license from the hospital in case I got stopped by the police because DC was on lockdown. Right. And that's where we went from the hotel to a place in DC in inside DC and we had to stay there seven weeks. So I was on the streets of DC for seven weeks wow. during the COVID breakout. That's crazy. So I could, I mean, that was, that's a whole nother yeah. thing, but these are things. And that's all stemming from my getting back to my wife being sick. Yeah. You've got to deal. You got to hand, deal with the hand you're dealt. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't able to be in the countryside and what right. you, your family member's sick. In this case, it's my wife. Yeah. She needs life-saving radiation treatment, which ended up being good, and we getting through it. And um, she's not physically fit to put a backpack on and bug out in the woods. Or so a lot of my preparations have to be around her mm -hmm. handicap. That's why I'm saying I don't plan on leaving and running away unless I go to like my parents' house or my brother. They're kind of local or my camper. Other than that, we're not driving cross country and going into the wilderness yeah. to survive. She's just not, she just can't do it. That, that, that's a whole movie within itself. So, yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> speaking of movies. I mean, you, you, you were in, you, you were in DC. Right. <laughs> during the lockdown COVID. Right. Your wife had cancer going through radiation treatment. Right. You're trying to figure out how to survive. in DC. Right. It's locked down, right? Right. And I'd be, I'd walk out. Uh, at the time, my older daughter lived in downtown DC. That's where, that's where we stayed. Okay. They had since moved out. Yeah. But we were about a few miles. I forget the area, but it was a few miles from the capital. Mm. Uh, so what I would do is, we were all, out, we're all on lockdown. So we're ordering food being delivered, which DC had a pretty good network of right. like DoorDash or whatever it was. So my daughter would order food, I'll, you know, have it delivered. Yeah. A couple of times I got on the way back from the radiation, I stopped at the grocery store. We put our masks and gloves on and I have it all. That's why my channel is like a vlog, really. My Bibles and Barbells channel. Mm -hmm. It's like a vlog of my life, really. Right. Since 2009, since I started it. Wow. Um, so at, in the afternoons when we got back from the radiation, I would go next door. There was a big cemetery mm -hmm. and I'd go jogging around the cemetery. And I remember people would stop me on the street, put your mask on. I'm like, no, we're outside. Yeah. I'm not putting a mask on. I'm going right. jogging on the cemetery, but they were already at that time, people confronting me on the street and I didn't want any issues, but um, it was, it was, it was an, it was a time of uncertainty because we didn't know yeah. what was going to happen at the time, you yeah. know? Wow. Uh, but that's that was my like a nightmare come true being away from 
you know, you got all your preps at home. You're kind of safe mm -hmm. if there was a lockdown or something like that. All right, we're home. I got this, that. I got power, right. food, water, filtration. But when you're on the road with just you and your wife mm -hmm. in, the, in the middle of a part of the country that is heavily populate, populated, For sure. um, it was like, oh, gosh, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it was it was scary. And I had I made. Let's just say I made some. Uh, I had some self-defense with me. But right. not nearly something that if you're home and able to defend your homes. But I knew I was traveling for seven weeks, so I won't go into detail on that because some of it might not be right. sit well with some people. But yeah, yeah. Um, to me, it's I'm not taking a chance. If it's me, me by myself, I'm fine. If I'm with my wife and my kids, right, it's game on. I don't care what your laws are or right what people say. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just you won't got to protect yourself and your family. <laughs> my my family's number one, and that's it. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to be a. I'm not. I'm going to do as best I can not to be a victim. Yeah, no, for Let's sure. Put it that way. <laughs> and that's that 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 that's the worst case scenario right there. I mean, yeah, literally having to protect your family in a situation where you may not have all the control or all the tools that you need, right? Um, all the resources that you may have at home. Right. And my daughter was getting, we'd get a knock at the door. She had like a brownstone. Yeah. With like a front porch. It was right in the middle of the city. So the street that she was on, people would cut through. A lot of people were walking through, mm -hmm. cutting through. We had some knocks on the door from strange people during the COVID. Hey, can I cut your grass for 20 bucks? Or yeah. And I'm like standing behind my daughter listening to the guy. I'm like, you know, don't open the door, number one. Tell him no. Right. So it, I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, yeah. were yeah. people going to start kicking doors in? Uh, were things going to, I didn't, I had no idea. Wow. I was, I wasn't planning on that scenario, mm -hmm. the lockdown to happen while we were traveling. Yeah. And, and it just happened at the hotel. We're, we're, we're going to have to have another video <laughs> on just lessons learned. Oh yeah. Scenario. You know, we'll yeah. get back to that one for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that that that's serious business right there. So in 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 this coming election season, what what is just give me one top priority you think people should be preparing for in their in their lives and in preparing their family, preparing themselves, um, spiritually, mentally, you know, just just and all all around, what do you okay. believe would be the best area to focus on? First and first and foremost, and if, if you, I know if you've seen some of my videos over the years, mm -hmm. first and foremost is the spiritual factor, your faith right. in Jesus, right. um, and to make sure that you, your loved ones, know Him person. That to me, there's nothing more important than that relationship with the Most High through His Son. Right. That is offered to anyone. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. <laughs> black, white, red, green. Yeah. Uh, age. Yeah. Young, old. Uh, ethnic, ethnicity, part of the world you live in. You know. That's first and foremost. So that would be my first and foremost. That's your first and foremost strength that'll get you through right. into the physical end of it that's yeah. taking place. Cause what's happening and this could be another good talk as well down the road. Yeah. What's happening in our country and around the world is connected. I believe spiritually with dark forces ah. converging on the world to change it into something where a false Messiah yeah. is getting ready to appear. Right. And so that false Messiah or Antichrist is going to, it's interwoven into what's going on right now. So first and foremost is spiritual. Secondly is the physical end or the, the prepping end or the survival end, whatever you want to call it. Again, you have to look and see where you're at. Some people are in apartments. Some people are in the city. 
and they can't leave or they can't move to the country or they can't move from New York to South Carolina or another state or, you know, that's potentially safer. Um, so you have to deal with what you're given. So in what you're given, make the best preparations that you can for yourself, your family to survive an extended period. We always said when I had my channel uh, years ago, I used to talk to a guy named Miami Prepper. And we used to always no pray Miami prepper. 90 days, you yeah. know, 90 days would be, was like the, what we shot for 90 days where you didn't have to worry about leaving your house. Yeah. And I would still say that today, that 90 days or more, if you could do it is good because the less you have to go out in the, in an event of some type of unrest, which I think is coming mm -hmm. due to politics in the country I don't care if you're left or right or whatever, the politics, the uh, situation in the Middle East, in Ukraine, you know, you probably know a lot more being in the military, kind of what's going on on that aspect of it. Right. But I'm just, look the way I'm looking at it, we could possibly overnight be in a war, <laughs> World War Three, whatever you want to call it. We could have simultaneously attacks at home from within from people that have come here uh illegally let's say from all over the world right um and now that are in our cities and our towns and so the person uh, just the average person looking at that has to be say to themselves what if all of this broke bad kind of all at once plus now a possible pandemic coming in yeah. H5N1, right. which is kind of slowly I'm seeing the same things we saw in 2019 leading up to what if all that hit like a tidal wave hmm. kind of around uh, just before the election, let's say going into the fall, right. August, September, with kind of all this stuff snowballing, and happening and then hey we can't have an election or we got to postpone it or yeah there's all kinds of things on the table that um uh, let's call them politicians governments can use mm -hmm. to push us in any one of those directions or all all of those directions at once yeah <laughs> now what then what do you do <laughs> wow yeah i mean you you bring up good points i mean there's so many scenarios that could happen many events leading up to certain things happening and focusing on definitely your spiritual aspect um, because that that's going to hold you. That's going to hold your mind, your family. Uh, right. And then taking care of wherever you are, you know, your location, whether you have a single family home or you live in an apartment, you live in the mm -hmm. city, you live in the country, you know, that's definitely going to uh, determine what your preparations are. Um, so the things that you brought up were, areas I think people struggle with um, as far as getting started, knowing how to communicate with their family, knowing, bringing or bringing up communications, even uh, if our cell phones don't work, if our home phones don't work, uh, if the internet goes down um, or being right. in vulnerable situations and locations such as yourself in DC during COVID where you never know what may happen. You never know if you'll have resources with you. Um, so I think people struggle with these areas and really don't know how to start and progress. Um, but the things that you said uh, with our political structure and, and, and areas that may impact the way we live and the way we survive, um, right. pending, you know, who gets in the office or who doesn't get in office or, you know, certain wars taking place. Um, right. These areas are important to have informative um, and clear information on, as you said. Mm -hmm. I have a group of um, family members that we were on like, um, what do they call it? Like a texting chat. Right. I think there's like 10 of us. Okay. And so we've had it since, I'd say, tw uh, like January 2020. Mm. So we go, we go back and forth and they'll, you know, we 
I'll often send them. I haven't, I've kind of backed off the chat and recently. Right. Because I think a lot of the stuff that I preach or say falls on deaf, deaf ears sometimes. Mm. Most of them are up in the New York area. Okay. There's a few in Florida. Most are in New York. Okay. Uh, in that area. Then there's myself and my brother, which are here in South Carolina. My brother's actually in North Carolina. Okay. So one of the, my cousins in the chat texted me the other day. I texted something to be prepared for whatever, something I was doing. Right. And he said, oh, you that stupid van that you have, you're not going to be able to get anywhere. I've got a four wheel drive right. vehicle. I could get anywhere I want. And so I text, you know, I said, well, what is your, like, what's the scenario that you're thinking of that you're going to get in your four wheel drive vehicle and right. drive all around your area of New York and Connecticut Yeah, in a grid, in a grid down or some type of event where, cause they were talking like civil unrest type stuff. Okay. So I'm like, okay, so let's just say there's a civil unrest in your area. Right. Do you actually think you're going to get in your car, your four wheel drive car and start like driving down main roads and going right. off? I said, you'll probably be killed in about the first two minutes or your car will be taken or you'll be uh, sniped at by a sniper somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I says, you have to be able to hunker down. You th right. th these people that I'm talking to, some of them, not all of them, right. have it in their head like, okay, the, there's a civil unrest or civil war. Let's say some type of riots. or something. They think they're going to go out and still have their cell phone, call their friends, meet me here, meet me there, or go pick up their loved ones into Long Island right. during all this. Pro I says, do you realize you're going to have probably have no power, no water? No, no cell phone. You don't have a ham radio. You don't have a two way radio. Where are you going? <laughs> what, what, what's your plan? Like what I says, yeah, my van is not a four wheel drive. It's a battleship. Right. It's not meant to go across country during a riot yeah. or a grid or a, you know, civil unrest. It's meant to be parked somewhere and a base of operations out of where I'm hiding or something. Right. I says that a lot of the scenarios that people have in their head, they're thinking that they're still going to have power. That, like, in other words, we're going to fight, do all this. Then we're going to go out to dinner at such, such and such a restaurant. Like it's going to be open. Yeah. I says, you're, you're thinking the whole, I don't know what you're thinking. It's, it's just, yeah. it's beyond my belief. So, yeah. and I try to drill it into them. You have to be able to, like I've told you in the beginning, stay put mm -hmm. you don't want to have to go out to buy bottled water in a store or fight for toilet paper like happened during covid yeah that's what you don't want to do you don't want to put yourself in harm's way right. you hunker down and you wait it out and let everybody else go out and kill each other yeah, yeah. you need to stay home with your family and that, therefore your preps need to be based on how you live how what do you eat what do you drink Right. Just have that in your house. It's not, it's yeah. no, it's not rocket science. Even I could do it. And I'm dyslexic and all this other stuff. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think the, the part where people think that they'll still have their everyday conveniences. Um, right. Such it's, as power, it's, you know, they're, they're dreaming going to the grocery <laughs> store freely, going right. To the gas station, getting gas, you know, those simple things we take for granted here. Right. Um, and, and it's, it's a, it's mind blowing when these situations happen where they believe that things are going to go right back online and right back to way, the way it was because it has happened, you know, with storms and hurricanes, yeah, right. but we've had the necessary resources to do that. But if, right. if we're talking about a grand scheme of, of an event that happens across the nation, right. The power right. gets off across the nation, right. um, that goes into a whole nother level of preparedness. Right. And it's possible where they live in the New York metropolitan area that it could be worse up there and not as bad where I am. Right. Or, you know, or vice versa, whatever. But uh, to think that you're just going to go out and everything's going to be like normal. I mean, yeah. If you read um, 
there's a guy on YouTube. His name's Selko Be Begovic. Okay. He, he he went through the Bosnian. Uh, one year in hell is his training. His original thing that came out was called One Year in Hell. Okay. You could listen to the. Um, it's online. It's on. Um, it's on YouTube. probably on YouTube, and you could get access to the account. Okay. To listen to all the audio recordings, and he'll tell you straight out. When the war hit, when the missile started flying and the war hit his area, mm -hmm. if they went out during the day, you got snipered, you got killed. You had to go out at night to forage and salvage and get firewood and look for whatever. If you went out during the day, you, there was people shooting at you. You didn't know where they were. Right. So that's the scenario that I was telling my cousin Listen, just to, if something happens in the middle of the day and you start going out, mm -hmm. driving your four-wheel drive car, mm -hmm. what if somebody blocks the road off or hits you from an, from another house or something with a rifle, you don't even see it coming? Yeah. And now your four-wheel drive is useless because you're dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just you have to – yeah, and they're, they're just, a lot of the people that I'm talking to are not thinking of those scenarios where – when the grid's down, it's down. You can't flush your toilet. Right. <laughs> you know, where are you putting? Number one, do you have hygiene? Do you have a, a spare toilet bowl? Do you have a way to get rid of mm -hmm. waste? I mean, because disease is going to happen oh, probably yeah. pretty quick. Right. Which Selko said in his one year in hell that hygiene was the number one killer. Mm. Okay. Not being able to bathe. You get, they got cuts under their arms in their groin area, infections. Yeah. They had no way to rinse it, no proper meds. Wow. Um, and he says people died from basic infections, from hygiene, from not being able to shower, and all the not this all this fancy stuff. It was just basic hygiene. Mm -hmm. Alcohol, cleaning yourself with alcohol, and yeah. and they were using what they call rakia. It's like a wine, okay. and it has alcohol in it. They were cleaning their underarms and different parts of their bodies to stay. And he tells you he went through this for a year. Wow. How do you spell his name? Um so, I have one of it. I have one of his books. Let me let me grab it one second. All right. Selkovich, because that, that's definitely an interesting topic because you know, a lot of people don't think about you know, medical and, and cleaning and hygiene and, and trying to uh, survive with that type of environment where you don't have your modern day technology to help you clean, shower, you know, wash things, wash your dishes, clean your clothes. Mm -hmm. you know, th th these are areas that are minimum to us right now because we live in a Western society. Right. But when you're when you're overseas or or you don't have power, you know that that becomes essential hygiene and health. Um. And even medications that you may not have, you know, that may not be available to you. Mm -hmm. you know, I know a lot of people need refrigerators for their medications. You know, what, what do you do when you don't have these modern day technologies? But my mom has, uh, my mom takes insulin. It needs to be refrigerated. I make sure I have 12 volt off grid type refrigerators that could run off solar, off my battery mm -hmm. to keep some essential stuff cold or to make ice or to do whatever in a, in a grid down. So my mother, whatever insulin she has stored and stockpiled doesn't go bad. Mm -hmm. So she can get through it as well. So if you have family members that have, need some type of medication like that, right. that's life-saving, number one, make sure you have it, extra of it. In the event of a, a 90 day grid down or something like that. Right. But then also be able, what do I need to buy to keep it cold mm. if the power goes out? Mm. And how do I do it? This is the book. Right. So Selko Begovic, B E G O V I C. The book is The Dark Secrets of SHTF Survival. Um, and it's his his account of one year in hell with the grid down in Bosnia, that area, sir, you know, during those wars in the nineties, the Bosnian wars. 
Okay. And um, what they did and how they had to survive day to day. Hmm. In 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 the book or in his talks, just to, uh, I'll just mention it. He talks about by day three of when the grid went down or when the attacks hit, mm -hmm. people that weren't prepared, men were having their wives have relations with other men right. for a can of spam. Wow. So just put that in your, Please. just put that in your wheelhouse. Yeah. If you're not prepared. Yeah. How, what hunger will make people do. Mm-hmm. Or thirst, or you know, water, clean water, right? Or a can of spam, yeah. Uh, and and that, he said gangs formed extremely quickly. Yeah, that's another one. Number two, people that were, let's say, normal in normal times, mm -hmm. like maybe your neighbor, you say hello to him, you wave to him or her. Right. When that happened, that person turned into a sociopath. Wow or a killer or joined a gang just to stay alive and survive. Mm -hmm. And now they were living next door. <laughs> so who, you, who is good in who you're cordial with in mm -hmm. normal times. If suddenly the grid goes down or something happens in your area, unless you really know these people other than just like as neighbor, like most of us know our neighbors, Hey, how you doing? Right. You see them here, there, you have small talk. Yeah. A lot of my neighbors, I don't know intimately, like, do I trust them with my grandsons or right. my or if my wife's around? or So these are all things that got to be in your wheelhouse because with these upcoming elections, there may very well be, we may very well be tested in certain cities or certain parts of the country. Maybe not the whole country, mm -hmm. but certain parts might be down and very bad yeah. where these things like he writes in the book actually happen. Wow. Wow. Um, Cause they're, I mean, they're talking now about our water supplies. You, you see the little yeah. things in the news. Mm -hmm. I, what, what is that? What, are they going to poison it? Shut it? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and all these things have to run water's number one. <laughs> right. I mean, you need water to, to have sanitation. For sure. Right. And, and just to, on that topic, during the email or the texting chat with my cousins, mm. I installed a little $20 thing on your gutter. It's by a company called Odie. It's okay. a bypass that when it rains, you got a little stem mm. with a cork in it. You pull it out and the water goes out and you can fill a bucket up mm. or a barrel or, or a clean garbage pail. Right. So I installed that and I showed, I have a video showing how I did it. Right. And I, I even waited until it rained out. And when it rained out, I got, it wasn't even raining hard. Mm. And I got like 25 gallons of water nice. into a clean pail that basically you could drink, right? but you could filter that through a straw or something, a Berkey, some type of gravity filter even, or a light, a Sawyer mini. Yeah. And that's enough water to clean, wash, cook, for days, just from that little thing I put on my gutter. Hmm. And so last week I made an update. I put a little hose bib on it with a thing. I could screw a hose to it. And while it's raining, I could run the hose right inside my garage and fill buckets up while it's raining with that little bypass. Little, It's a little $10 um, water bandit, they call it. Okay. I just put it over the cork part. Right. It has a hose bib on the end. I have a cap on it now, you know, so nothing comes out of it. But when I'm, when it's raining, I just take the cap off, put an RV hose on and then have some clean five gallon buckets or whatever, or 50 gallon garbage can that's brand new mm -hmm. and fill it up with water. When it rains out, you got 50 gallons of water wow. that you don't have to go salvaging for or filter, you know, or, you know, try to process river water or whatever, mm -hmm. just by a little $20 thing. You could put on your gutter. Yeah. Little things like that go a long way. Right. And, and I'm not trying, I'm not saying collecting 3000 gallons of water with exactly. these tanks that people have. This is, I'm in the suburbs and I could do it in my, my backyard 
-hmm. So you could do it too if you're in the suburbs too. Just yeah. invest in the thing. It takes 15 minutes to install. Mm -hmm. And now you'll have water when when it rains out. Yeah, that, that's a really good tip. I mean, and just just learning new information about something as simple as that that can make a world of difference in right. the Bible level. I mean, that, that, that that's really good. I mean, we've covered so many areas in just this one session. So we're definitely going yeah, to... Yeah, it's just... Come stuff back. that just comes up in conversation and yeah no no we're, we're gonna we're gonna do this again and and, and we're gonna have another uh session uh with you Ant, and get you know more of what you're doing with your preparedness and and, and getting ready in scenarios because mm -hmm. this definitely was good we're, we're gonna have more conversations any anytime i'm glad you're doing this type of format yeah. too and reaching out to other people to because other people in different parts of the country, different life experiences will light some bells off in all our heads that, hey, I haven't thought of that yet. Right. Yeah. So um, give the people uh, what your YouTube, Instagram, all, all your social sites, yeah. they can reach you. So on uh, YouTube is my biggest platform since 2009. It's Bibles, the letter N, as in Nancy, the so Bibles and barbells. Uh, and if you search YouTube, you'll find it. Uh, Instagram is pray, prep, pump iron, like one word. And uh, what else do I have? I have a bit shoot channel, but a lot of my YouTubes go right to bit shoot. That's under um, pray, prep, pump iron, bit shoot. But most of my stuff's on, on YouTube. And then Facebook, um, a lot of people go on Facebook. I'm on there. With my name Anthony, last name I O V I N O. So Facebook, I do a lot. Not so much prepping. I'll do some Bible studies and some other things. But Facebook is another medium how people stay in touch with me, as well. Awesome. Um, but no, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, and I appreciate it. And this is going to be set up on the Preparedness Talk podcast. It's also going to be on YouTube. So you guys check it out there's definitely a lot of wealth of information in this one video and again we're gonna have a part two with big ant uh and bibles and barbells mm -hmm. uh, with another session uh but guys thank you for tuning in be safe be healthy stay blessed this is prepare mentality <laughs>